and hello we're back we're going right into fun world and while we're waiting for it to load you can subscribe if you haven't yet today we're going to talk about opera again but maybe first i was thinking of whether i should get myself a gaming pc i'm right now doing all of this on my macbook and it works kind of well i mean it's a bit riggedy i would say um it's getting it's a bit slow everything's loading as you can see somewhat slowly feels like there's a lot of ooh, su sunset with cow i wanted to frame you okay well we got it earlier that's all right now we're gonna go sleep um but yeah so I'm, i've been thinking about that but i don't know it's the headache i used to build my gaming pcs but now living in japan and um being lazy i don't know if i want to do that i'm thinking about it anyways i mean i'm just really playing minecraft so ooh, the crops are growing very nice okay so like i said today is an we should maybe decide what to do here should we do like a little over how much stuff do we have i think i'm going to just get to chop some more wood today i think i'll leave this one for now looks kind of cute a lot but yeah so i went to the opera the opera is called simon bocca negra by giuseppe verdi I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. I'm just like, that's probably how Italians pronounce it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it was really good. I, I loved it, to be honest. Um, a, one of the best opera experience I had. Um, the, the music was just like really, really good. I don't know, it just, it worked for me. Oh, a bee. A honey bee. Hello. Hello, Governor B. I can see a stinger. Oh, you're cute. You're really cute. Look at the eyes. You're adorable. Isn't it? Look, I can look at it. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Interactive. Um, all right. Let's get some wood. Chop that wood. Yeah, um, what what should I, where should I start? So, one thing I like about opera is, like, it's it's a, it's a good reason to dress up a little bit. You know, lately I've been, um, well, I wouldn't say I've been into fashion, but I've been kind of, like, thinking, oh, it's nice to, to dress up a little bit or think more about my outfits. And it's a good reason to wear, like, my more formal shirts and I, I got a really nice coat oh yeah that was actually another thing you know like if you're thinking of like theater and the opera you know cloak rooms i used the, i used the cloak room for the first time that was cool you know i just gave them my coat they took it and then later i got it back everything went swimmingly so yeah that was that was fun um, I don't, I mean, obviously I've used cloakrooms before, but I've never used a cloakroom at the opera, you know, completely different experience. Yeah, I liked it. And there's, um, I think, like I said before, I mean, not everyone's like super dressed up. People are pretty normally dressed here and, um, but every once in a while you see people who are like next level. I think I t said this before, uh, I've. A couple months ago, I, I think it might have been actually ballet, I'm not 100% sure, but there was this black couple that was dressed so good. Oh my God, they were like, um, I don't even know what it is. Like it, it was not just a suit, it was like maybe like a tuxedo or something. Like it, it looked like next level. And she was dressed in like a black um, uh, dress. Oh man. Very good, very good. I mean, Sarah's always dressed really, really nice anyways, like every day. Obviously, like very cute style, but it, it looks uh, 
good, well put together. Me, not so much, but I'm, I'm trying to focus on that a bit more. But yeah, and as for the Japanese people, some come in like kimono and stuff. Uh, also the, the men, which I, I really like. I think it's like a really good look. Um, obviously, the clientele is generally older at opera. And in fact, um, there's like a... For the theater, there's like an under 30... Um, what do you call it? Uh, in, in Japanese, it's waribiki. What is it? Like, um, uh, not an, it's not coupon. It's like... Um, let me think. A uh, discount. I can speak English. Don't worry. You can continue listening. If you can speak English, I can do it too. Um, but yeah. Oh. Oh. Ah, here we go. Here we go too. Uh, so yeah, for like the theater generally, there's a discount if you're under 30. But for the opera, there's a discount if you're under 50. <laughs> so which that, that kind of shows you what clientele. Uh, goes to the opera, I'd say. Uh, but yeah, so it, it's really nice. Um, I, I had a good seat. It was on the third floor. Like the opera is like, I don't know how many floors they have. I think four. So it was kind of high up, but I was um, on like the very edge. Oh, lava. The floor is literally lava. Um, on, the, on the edge. Um, so I had the direct view of the whole uh of the whole stage and i could see other people did a bit of the old people watching yeah it was it was really nice and what else let me see yeah i think we can go into uh some of the actual opera uh like i said Ah, okay, so the set design was very, it was interesting. They they ah, they always do like great things with the set. Um, this time they had like kind of a cutout, which looked a bit like, it actually looked a bit like lava or like a volcano. And it would go up and down depending on where you, it's, it's really hard to put into words. I mean, radio is obviously the theater of the mind, but I'm not the, the best um director of it <laughs> so you'll just have to use your own imagination for how it looked and uh i'll, I'll maybe let me see uh oh yeah so what they had is like it, it looked a bit like a volcano that was like upside down and like it it didn't spit fire but it had like you know lightning and like some t uh, light no not lightning lighting that made it seem like it was glowing and um, smoke came out of it sometimes. And it was kind of like, it was interesting because, yeah, I guess it was just like there the whole, most of the time, I think. Yeah, we were, it was an impressive view in a ways. And the, the costumes were interesting. They were like kind of very modern because so the, the opera itself plays in is set in the 14th century in Genoa. Uh, so like, you know, the Italian city-states that that kind of very similar. I, I think I didn't talk about this. I should talk about this too. It was like during my hiatus, I went to see um, Shakespeare plays, which also often <laughs> set in Italian city-states, you know, it's kind of like a cool time, I guess. Um, I feel it's 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 gone a little bit out of favor, but clearly, in like Shakespeare's time and in uh, then later too, Verdi was uh, writing in the nineteenth century um, or composing in the nineteenth century. He didn't write a thing, I think. Okay, I might might overstate this, but the way that opera usually often works is that there's like a composer and someone who writes the. Oh my ignorance! Um, well, they basically write the 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 story and stuff. It's kind of like a, often a separated endeavor between us. I mean, they work together, but it's uh, different people often. What is this called? There's like a word for it. Hmm, I don't know. You'll have to look it up yourself, I guess. But either way, yeah. So, uh, Chav not Japanese, um, Italian city-states, popular. 
and why did I? Um, <laughs> I have the shortest attention span ever. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay, yeah, so it plays in Genoa. And um, I guess we can go into the story, right? Yeah, why not? Um, boop, 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 boop. So we, we're starting out. So it starts, the first scene is like, it's this guy. Paolo, who is basically conspiring to find a new doge, like the, I guess in in English you call it a doge, like the like the coin, <laughs> the the Bitcoin alternative, uh, or the the famous dog, um, that the Bitcoin alternative is also referencing. <laughs> Uh, and so he's he's kind of conspiring to find a new guy to oh, well to to get a new guy on this throne, and he chooses Simon Bocanegra, um, someone he knows who he thinks can have the support of the people because he's um, he's a corsair. He's like he's like sort of I guess a pirate himself, but he also defeated the other pirates. He's like. Yeah, a seafarer, definitely. Um, that's like one of the big things. And people can rally behind him. And so that's that's kind of like the political story. It's it's a little bit like, like the Star Wars prequels in that it heavily does feature uh, politics as well, while it also has a lost oh whoa, I'm in the middle of the night. I didn't I I just talked the day away. And now I might literally die. I'm also burned. Okay, this is all not working out for me. See, this is how people die in zombie apocalypses. You know, they just keep talking to their viewers about the opera. And then the zombie goes after them. And they, they just literally die. They might even drown if they're not careful. Boop. I do love the, the jump swimming. <laughs> wom, wom. It's like I'm doing butterfly. It's like... Whoosh. Ah, ah, exhausting. <laughs> We're role playing the swimming. Um, yeah, so don't want to die. So I'm going to just quickly have a little sleep. Maybe eat some bread. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, yeah, so like it's like Star Wars in that it mixes the, the political intrigue and the, the love story and uh, the laser swords. Does, it actually doesn't have many laser swords. It has normal swords, but, you know, pretty similar. That's so weirdly placed. Uh, what was I thinking? Oh, I think I didn't have space. All right. Good night, everyone. Um, yeah. So there's the, the political uh, intrigue aspect, which is like getting Simon Bocanegra elected as the new Dolce. And then... Bread. Yum, 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 yum. Okay, and then there's a love story where where Simon is in, or I guess in English it would be Simon, but his name is Simon. Simon Boca Negra. <laughs> uh, he, he's in love with this girl, Maria, who is from a, a good family. He's obviously not like that high standing, Although he might become the Dolce, you know, that's kind of what he's like. He he's also like angling for this. He wants to make his, you know, get his station in life, and then he can can marry Maria, who he loves, who he has had an well, not an affair, but he had a a, a child with clearly out of wedlock since he since they can't haven't married yet, and so Maria has been holed up in her home for. For a while, no one's seen her for months. And basically, it turns out she has just died. We don't know exactly why, but um, her father is grieving deeply, is very mad at Simon. And then at the same time, basically, they are like political rivals, you know? Um, her father is like in power now and now he's going to become maybe the new Dolce. 
And yeah, so there's this kind of these these intrigues going on, and the father. So Simon goes to his um, his lo beloved's uh, place, which is abandoned. But she, outside, he meets the father, and they they talk while they sing. They sing to each other. But the father doesn't tell him that Maria has died. He's just, you know, bereaved. He curses him. Simon wants to make amends. And, um, oh, the little wrinkle that I'm also, you know, I've, I've, I've heard that the worse you tell a story, the better you do on TikTok. Maybe I should upload this on TikTok. <laughs> but, um, so they had a, oh, no, I did say that. They had a child out of wedlock. But um, the kid is like, was staying with an old lady in Venice. Now, no, in Pisa. All, all Italian cities are the same, ultimately, aren't they? Uh, but she she has been lost. The old lady died. It seems from natural causes, like it's not more specified. And the, the girl kind of has been lost. She stayed with her for a while, we assume. But then she went wandered off in the woods and she's lost to Simon. And um, the father is like, he doesn't know this, but he's like, give me, give me the child of my, my Maria, my, my daughter, and we can, we can uh, hash these things out. And then Simon has to confess, it's like, she's lost to me. And, and then the father's like, you, we can never, until we are not reunited, I will never um, accept you or something like that and she kind of there's this this great scene um or maybe i should roll this up so the political intrigue at the time is like paolo the 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 ally of simon the guy who is trying to get him him elected i guess because he doesn't think he himself can get elected um it's like working on this and this oh there's this really good scene like in the in this design where uh, the people rally around Simon. Uh, it's like done with like all the people are like dressed in like black cloaks. You can't really see them. They're actually kind of like crawling on the floor. I guess it's kind of supposed to be like a sea of people. Oh, oh man, it was. Mm, I'm I'm doing like chef's kiss fingers. It's like Mwah. very good. I loved it. Um, and they're like singing for him to be elected. Uh, so this was really, really good scene in the first act. And um, so the father, though, um, Simon basically is like, oh, I'm going to be the daughter, you know, we sh we sh you should you should accept me. But he, Ma Maria is dead, right? His love is dead. Like you, you, that, that, uh, that kid has fallen in the well, as we say, in Germany. Uh, but the father doesn't tell him and he basically like, uh makes him like walk into this this tomb now now the the big uh house that maria lived in and the father lived in which is abandoned and he walks in and and sees his his beloved dead you know and he feels obviously like deep emotions like all all happiness is drained from him and that's the same moment that like he's crowned as the as the Dolce again like this this was a second amazing scene like I, I just like I was I was moved I was there for it uh they're like he has just met her he's like completely like his his face is is pale and and in shock and they're like crowning him in this regalia of like uh, like a red, um, what is it, a red cloak and a crown and like they're hoisting him up and he's just like, you know, you can just like see the thing. It's like he's gone his political will, but like all his happiness, his his daughter is lost to him. His, his the love of his life is is dead. He is kind of like these two emotions at the same time. And it was like just really well captured by, by the well, the acting, obviously, the music is working, <laughs> working together to to move you. Um, so yeah, that was that was that was just excellent. That was really good. That was like the first act, and um, it's kind of hard to say what the acts are. Actually, if you look on Wikipedia, they kind of changed the two. Initially, 
apparently initially it wasn't very well received, but um, then they they changed some things around and it's it's got better. And the one I saw was was great. It's like everything basically, uh, all all of the parts together. Mm. So I did really like that. And I mean, there was a lot of other good stuff later, but those two scenes that I described, I think they were like really, they were like some of the high points for me. I was just like next level impressed. All right, so let's see. Um, so this is basically just the prologue of the story. Are we? Holy moly. We are, we are deep in the weeds here. <laughs> um, how about... How about I actually cut it off here and act two is going to be in the next episode. So you'll have to uh, subscribe again. I mean, you already subscribed during waiting period earlier. So you'll have to subscribe to get again to hear it next time. Uh, I'm going to just... The thing is, I think what I'm going to do, like usually I go into Fun World and out of Fun World. This time I think I'll just do this. I'll stop recording and then I'll say next and we're going to try this. All right. Um, I, I see you guys in the next one. Stay spoopy, friends.